Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thank you for coming to my channel. I appreciate you visiting. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, before you leave, if you hit the like button, that helps out my channel a lot as far as getting it promoted. So thank you in advance for doing that. And um, today I was going to do, uh, I've had this uh, piece of, uh, well, it's a cabochon, but it's cut from part of an ammonite shell. And so it's got some of the little suture marks going across it, as well as a little bit of opalescence to it. And it's kind of a brown color, and I've always thought it's going to be hard to make that one really stand out. So I thought I'd try something. I was going to do uh, add a little sparkle kind of that swings in front of the stone itself to kind of draw attention to it. So we'll see if that works out. I think we're going to call it a layer pendant maybe or something like that. So um, we'll give that a shot. And uh, before we get started, though, I wanted to thank my subscribers. We passed uh, 5,500 recently is amazing thank you guys and uh, I also wanted to thank my uh, patrons over on patreon uh, they're buying my premium content and I really appreciate their contribution as well as getting to know them over there they're a really nice bunch with a lot of talented people um, so thank you guys for your support so let's get started on this project all right so let me show you the stone here this is the little ammonite. Uh, you can see it's got the kind of, these are called sutures and they were where the shell segments joined together. And ammonites had kind of fun sort of organic-y, almost leaf-like uh, suture patterns which are kind of cool. And sometimes some of the shells uh, still have some opalescence to them. And you can see in a little bit in the middle here, this is the part that has some of that opalescence if you move it just right on the line. I don't know if I'm getting it by changing the angle on, on this or not, but um, that is also the part that has always made me kind of uh, reluctant to use this stone, uh, in addition to it just being a brown stone. I have a friend who always says brown stones don't sell. So, um, and without some, uh, some kind of decor or something to flash it up, sometimes I agree with that. It's hard to, it's harder to sell earth tone stuff sometimes. Um, so I thought uh, to enhance this, I have a little. Let's see if we can get it out of here. It's kind of a light smoky quartz. It's almost almost kind of a cross between a citrine and a smoky. They call it whiskey quartz sometimes. And I thought it might be kind of fun to uh, have this swinging freely in front of it to catch some light as the person moves. Uh, and maybe bring some attention to the stone so people actually see the patterns and stuff without just seeing a brown blob on your neck. So we'll see if that works out. I'll show you what I drew up here. This is my design idea books. I have three different styles. Uh, this is the first one and I've almost filled this one up. But what I like about them is they have this grid on them. It's hard to see on the camera but it's got little dots on every corner. So it helps me to keep things sort of symmetrical, um, which is a problem that I struggle with sometimes. All right. So you can see I've, I've got uh, just kind of a simple overall plan here. I'll just do a bezel around it. I'm going to put a little bit of, uh, I think it's about 16 gauge square wire as a border around it. Um, for the back, I'll use 26 gauge sterling silver sheet. Uh, I'll, I'm not sure what I'm going to use for that little uh, projecting loop there for the bale, but uh, for the bale itself, I'm, I'm going to do a double sandwich. We'll call it a Dagwood sandwich bale for anybody who's old enough to remember that. Um, and I think I'll have, uh, you know, the the chain will go through the back one here, and it'll be wider, I think, than the front one. In fact, uh, because one of the reasons I'm making it so tall is I want it so that the thing that hangs in front of the stone here, which is going to contain that whiskey quartz, uh, will be high enough for the stone. The stone's a relatively deep stone. And so I'm going to, I may even use for the bottom layer, I got uh, this little slab, this ingot of silver that I cast a while back for something. I might use that for the bottom one. Uh, spacer between these two pieces of sheet, and I'll probably use 18 gauge sheet 
And then for the top one, I may just use some 14 gauge wire or something like that, or another piece of 18 gauge sheet, something to that effect to make a narrower thing, because I don't need as wide of a gap for the top one. But I do want to boost it up a little bit so that that thing doesn't have to struggle to get over the top of that stone. So, and then we'll see how it looks with it. Uh, I'm going to hang it so that it kind of fits right in that little weird imperfection in the stone framed that way. We'll see how that turns out. So, I think first uh, we'll do some bezels for some stones. I'm going to use a 3 16 inch fine silver bezel strip. This is 26 gauge. It's a little sturdier than, than uh, thinner stuff, which I like to use more often than not anymore. If you've never seen my videos before, I use pretty much always uh, hard silver sheet solder. And I use a spray-on flux called Mighty Flux. Try and get that snugly around there. When you're measuring for a bezel, I always leave just a tiny bit extra for filing purposes. Always put the solder joint on one of the longer sides in the middle. <laughs> Never want to put it if it's got any kind of a bend or a corner or anything in it. Never want to put the solder joint near there because you have to bend it uh, more steeply then, and it's usually a little stiffer there. So try and when you're shaping your bezel, kind of steer that to be where you want it to be. Have a, a stone that's not symmetrical. You always want to make sure when you go to put the bottom on it, because you haven't done this, <laughs> and solder it down that way because then your stone won't fit. I did that. Uh, I haven't done it for a long time, and then I did it the other day when I was doing a video. So I think it was on the one where I was doing the leaf uh, bracelet. I had to flip that bezel over because I initially soldered it on upside down. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I think I'm going to put that on some 26 gauge sheet. And get it off of about right there, probably. Let's take it straight along that edge. Okay, I want to make sure this is nice and flat. When you're beginning, uh, sometimes you don't realize that uh, it takes longer to get one piece uh, up to the soldering temperature than another piece sometimes based on the amount of mass in it as well as where its position is on the pad because I'll be heating from above here and so this bezel sitting on top is super exposed to the heat directly from the flame and the sheet you're only getting it from the top here the other side is bleeding off some of that heat into the pad so this thing will get hotter much quicker than the sheet on the bottom and so you got to figure out ways to apply the heat to the bottom without hitting the bezel directly one way you can do it is to lift it up and tilt it and heat from below. Or uh, after you become more experienced, you can start to, you just get a feel for where you're applying the heat to the correct, uh, where you're applying the heat when it needs to be applied there. So um, some people use a little tripod to lift it up and get underneath it. That's a great idea too. Uh, but either way, before we do this, we need to cut ourselves uh, 
some more solder. So. That didn't work too bad this time, but I'm still going to give it a little downward pressure just to make sure it's touching nice. Just trying to make sure those are in contact with the side and the bottom. That one was pretty good and then I screwed it up. <laughs> it's standard operating procedure. Okay. So see how I'm kind of bobbing in and out around the bezel. I'm trying to not apply the heat directly to the bezel but more to the sheet. The bezel just being in proximity to the flame will get pretty hot. See, we're starting to get a flow edge now. If you're not getting a, a complete flow all the way around, if you tap it just a little bit like that sometimes while you're heating it, it'll make it jump the little, little tiny spaces that are left over. But once you get that trick of being able to keep the solder liquid without melting everything, it makes things a lot easier. So there's uh, two different ways I could have applied this little border here. Well, more than two ways, but I could have uh, made the piece beforehand and cut it to sit on top of the sheet and then soldered it down to the sheet. Or I can just solder it right to the base after I trim off the excess sheet. Either way, it'll work okay. This time I'm going to go with just soldering it to the side. One thing you do want to make sure is when you're doing this, you want it to be a really snug fit. Otherwise, you'll leave little uh, you know, amateurish looking gaps. Nobody wants that. This quartz will be good because it's got a checkerboard top, so it'll really catch the light. I think that'll help to grab your attention. So, I'm going to use the same kind of bezel on this one, wherever I stuck it. But, instead of a bottom, we're going to put a little step made out of two little jump rings that I'll make out of 18 gauge wire. Be flipping over on me. Pretty good on size, I think. I'm going to just find some 18 gauge. Here's a piece. Use 18 gauge round for a lot of stuff. It's just kind of a handy size. So what I'm going to do basically is make two little rings that fit perfectly one on top of the other in there. Perfectly is a relative term, I suppose, but still quite a bit too big there, so I will make it a bit smaller before I snip it. If you overlap them like that, you can kind of just keep making them smaller and smaller until they're about the size you want them to be. 
And then I cut them a little bit big anyway, so I can gradually snip little tiny pieces out until it fits in there snugly. Some of my patrons were talking about that they were having uh, challenges making the little rings for these step bezels like this. Um, you could. Uh, like I just do them by hand like this, but you don't have to do them this way. You could, you could uh, use a, a jump ring mandrel or whatever works for you. This is just kind of the way I've been doing it for a while, so I just kind of generally fall back on what I'm used to. Okay, you want to be careful it's not so tight that, that one side rides up a little bit because it'll cause you to have a, uh, a non-flat platform for your stone to be sitting on. But we really want it to sit flat. Right, so now I'll just do one more like that. Okay. Whichever one fits the tightest we'll put on the bottom. Pretty good. Let's put this one on. You also, once you're getting ready to solder these in, you want to make sure you push the top ring all the way down flat on top of the other ring. Sometimes when you're getting it to sit in there, it may not, it may have moved a little bit on you. This will be filed down quite a bit more because I just need to file it down to where just a little bit remains to get over the girdle of the stone, which is the midpoint. So we'll set that aside for now. I'll just uh, a 16 gauge square wire I made out of some 14 that I uh, had the other day for, for a different project. So I think I'm going to use that for this. So with this kind of stuff, you, you don't want to have any gap around there. It needs to be pretty tight. So, let's do this. Make the mark straight across. We'll cut off both of those just a little bit. You may notice that I do a lot of pick soldering. If you're interested in pick soldering, it's one of those things that takes you to a new level of skill, I think. So I'll put a link to my pick soldering video up there if you're interested. It's worth learning how to do that. Then I can take a little piece of solder like this, melt it on the end of the pick, pick it up. Heat the piece up to soldering temperature and just touch it where it needs to go. It jumps on there. It's a real easy way to apply uh, solder just where you want it, in the amount that you want. So I was able to get it over the top of the bezel there. Now, if you've got it nice and tight like this, you can just push it down to the base. Pretty tight seam around there. So to solder this on, let's just uh, we can do a, sort of the same thing we did with the step bezel. Put a few pieces of solder on here, 
flux this really good, set it on top so that the bottom of the bezel and this piece of square wire is, is sitting on the uh, solder, and heat it up to the point where it flows again, it should draw it up in there. So let's cut some more solder. What I'm watching for is it being able to see that solder seam on the top between the square wire and the bezel there. And once I've seen it all the way around, I know we're good. So. I'm going to use thicker sheet, but I'm trying to save a little weight on this one because it's kind of a big stone. So it's already a hefty, it's going to be a hefty piece like that. So. At least I didn't solder it on upside down this time. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be sitting like this. This needs to be hanging over the top of it. I'm going to hang it at a diagonal like that too. Now. Hopefully the overall thing is going to hang like that. So, but I want this above this to swing, so it needs to be raised up a little bit. So I'm going to have to make a, a fancy sort of bale for it. I think I'm going to uh, make it out of this shape, but I'm going to have to cut out several pieces of 18 gauge in that shape, so I'll do that next. So I made three of these little guys. They should all be pretty close to the same. And those are going to be our three of our layers. We're going to have spaces between them, though. And um, tried to draw a line right here where I want the bottom. Everything below there should be solid so that uh, it can fit around whatever we use for this part. And then a straight line parallel to that up here for the chain to flow under. And for for the bottom layer, so we'll have one layer like this. And then I'm going to use some some of this thick stuff. To create those two pieces and then we'll put a second layer on top of those and then we'll create a third layer on top of a couple of pieces of maybe 18 gauge sheet instead because I don't need the top one to be um, nearly as uh, deep I think so um, in order to cut these out of here I think probably the easiest way got a relatively straight edge there I just so there's that one. Also need this little one down here. So I'm going to cut out those two pieces with the saw, in theory. <laughs> so let's go do that. Apologies for my messy spot here. <laughs> this is probably a, a zero on the blade size. have these little pieces I cut out and I'm going to solder them down here but the best way probably would be to sweat a little bit of solder on each of these flip them over and just solder them on then we'll add another layer and then we'll add some more spacers and we'll add a third layer so it's a little, like I said a Dagwood sandwich sort of thing
I'm going to position them just a little bit off the edge so that I can file them down flush and there will be no seam. Either sweat some here or here. I think I'll put them on here. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to spend a little time getting this all cleaned up and symmetrical as best as I can. Be right back. Okay, so I did a couple of things off camera. I made this out of some more of that uh, square wire that was a little bit smaller. And I was kind of trying to calculate the angles. I want the stone to hang kind of like, like that over this kind of weird spot on the stone. And so I was calculating how long this needed to be, the little stem that's going to go through here. And this I made out of uh, 16 gauge round wire and I flattened it out a little bit so it would fit through that slot. And what we need to do, this one I think is first we need to solder it to the outside of this thing. Okay, let's solder that together.
Okay, in order not to solder that to anything, I'm going to try to make sure nothing's touching. And I'm going to heat only this part. I'm not going to heat that part. Okay, we'll see if we can pick solder that without giving anything else to accidentally flow. I'm going to use this as a support, so that's unlikely to, to fall off then, or less likely. Okay, I'm just going to pick that one little spot there. in a while. I went ahead and I set the faceted stone. I still need to do a little cleanup with the Dremel on the, the top of the bezel there, and as well as the top of this little bar, which I didn't quite get polished very well. Um, I have not yet set this. I put a little uh, thin piece of tag board behind it. In order to give it just a little bit of a cushion and uh, we'll go ahead and set this if you want to see how to set a, be uh, a bezel set faceted stone I'll put a link right up there for you uh, I'm just going to hold this down tightly and push it in with the flat side of my needle nose pliers or my chain nose The only difficult thing about setting this particular stone here was having it kind of flop around in here while I was doing it. It's, uh, it would help to be able to stabilize it with something. Okay, once you have it pushed in tightly and sort of rolled over the top, that, then we'll do that burnishing stage where you rub that top edge of the bezel. Just make sure it's really, really tight. Just do a little bit of cleanup with a Dremel. This will be kind of hanging like this, and we'll see how it looks. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the layer pendant. I think that was kind of a fun project. I like making that sort of a bale. If, uh, if you enjoyed it as well, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. That helps me out a great deal. Uh, I'd also love if you'd leave a comment or two, and uh, you know, share this with other friends you know who might like this as well. That helps me out too. So, if you're interested in supporting the channel in uh, any other ways, uh, you can check the video description for some ways to do that. Uh, I have a merch store. Uh, you can visit my website and look at some of my jewelry there. Um, you could uh, there's a, just a buy me a coffee link if you just want to help me out with supplies and stuff. That's just basically a tip. Uh, you can also check out the information in my Patreon, which is uh, there's a link for that as well. So. Hit the video description, hit that subscribe button, and uh, come back and watch some more videos. Uh, thanks. You guys take care. Happy silversmithing.